Okay, let's get started, everybody. Today, we have the great pleasure of hearing from Shram Majidi, uh, who went to medical school in the uh, Medical Sciences University of Tehran. Um, he went to uh, residency in neurology at uh, WashU, sorry, at GW in DC. And then he did a clinical uh, stroke fellowship at the NIH prior to coming here. Uh, is in a vascular fellowship and stayed on as an attending and is extremely productive and an excellent uh, colleague. So really looking forward to your talk, Sharam. Uh, today, Sharam's talking about global brain injury and primary ICH, what we know and what is next. Thank you for the introduction, Chris. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay, do you see my screen? It's good. Okay, great. So uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. So today I'm gonna talk about global brain injury in primary hypertensive ICH and just uh, go through what we know and what could be potentially next move on this. I have no uh, relevant financial disclosure. Just a little background, as you know, approximately 70,000 patients suffer from ICH every year in the United States. 30-day uh, mortality is very high, approximately about 50%, and only 20% of the survivors are functionally independent uh, in six months. And there is a two-fold increase in the incidence of ICH expected in the next 50 years, which will result in a much higher socioeconomical burden in the coming years. Uh, when it comes to the evidence-based uh, uh, clinical guideline for ICH management, traditionally ICH has uh, lagged behind uh, ischemic stroke and aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage in terms of the evidence from clinical trials. And despite a dramatic increase in the number of studies for, uh, for ICH intervention in the past decade, we still uh, don't have a single proven treatment for ICH that could be classified as level A evidence. And that is being actually reflected in the latest AHA guideline for management ICH. If, if you just go through it, so some of the highlights here. So the usefulness of the platelet transfusion in ICH uh, is uncertain. Uh, although fact, activated factor seven can limit the hematoma expansion, uh, uh, there is no uh, clear clinical benefit in outcome. So the factor seven A is not recommended in ICH patient. This is a reflection from the past trial. Uh, or when we go for IVH, uh, intraventricular administration of TPA appear uh, to be safe. However, the efficacy and safe, uh, safety of the treatment is uncertain. So IV, IVH clear trial. The efficacy of endoscopic treatment for IVH is still not known. And for patients with supratentorial ICH, the usefulness of surgery is not very well established. And for uh, supratentorial hematoma evacuation in deteriorating patient might be considered life-saving measure which we all agree on that. And then moving forward, again, an AHA uh, guideline, the effectiveness of minimally invasive clot evacuation and s tactic or endoscopic aspiration with or without uh, thrombolytic usage is still uncertain. And the efficacy of decompressive craniectomy with or without hematoma evacuation, although it can be life-saving in patients with midline shift and ma major mass effect and elevated ICP, but it is still not recommended as a uh, uh, treatment for all ICH patients. So, so why is that? Well, so basically 
uh, it just highlights the inability of these strategies that focus on reducing local mass effects, such as either it is surgical intervention or aggressive blood pressure management or administration of factor seven, which was actually uh, positive in terms of reducing the rate of uh, hematoma expansion, but because of not really uh, limiting the extent of secondary brain injury, it is not, this impact is not translating in uh, reducing disability or death. And surgical removal of ICDH hasn't resulted in improved outcome, presumably because of inability to prevent secondary brain injury and edema and area even distant to the hematoma. There is a tissue injury from primary ICH is not only due to the space occupying effect of initial hematoma mass, it also uh, initiate an ongoing cascade of events resulting in toxicity from blood breakdown products and release of thrombin and other inflammatory factors, which will lead to blood brain barrier disruption and blood CSF barrier disruption. And cause secondary brain injury. There's recent data support the occurrence of neuronal and glial injury and blood brain barrier breakdown in non-contiguous area to the hematoma. And cerebral edema in the area distant from the hematoma site may represent a new area of research and potentially an, ident an unidentified therapeutic target in these patients. And I'm gonna just highlight a few experimental and clinical studies in this uh, uh, topic. So, so this is uh, one of the studies done in the swine model of ICH. Uh, essentially what they, they did, they created ICH model by injecting uh, collagenase into the basal ganglia under stereotactic axis. Uh, and then in this model, when they, uh, created the ICH in the left uh, hemisphere, they had uh, neurophysiological monitoring and so somatic evoke potential reading prior to creating ICH and then after creating ICH. And as you see here, prior to ICH, you see end to any uh, response in the set on both sides when, when they active when they stimulated the uh, swine's uh, snout on the either left side, they got the response on the right side. And then when they activated the left side, they got response on the both sides. So there is like symmetric response on both sides, but right at 48 hours after creation of basal ganglia ICH, you see that the end to any response and set has been disappeared on both sides. So diminished uh, cortical excitability in ipsilateral and contralateral somatosensory uh, cortex. And, and then they correlated this in the histopathological evaluation, which was showing markedly increased inflammatory markers such as MMP9 in both hemispheres. <clears throat> in, a, in a similar study, again, in a so I model of ICH using uh, collagenase injection to create hemispheric ICH. Uh, this time the neurophysiological monitoring was focused on uh, spontaneous episode, episodes of spreading depression, which was observed in multiple sources adjacent to the focal ICH in the left hemisphere, which was propagating into the area distant from the uh, hemorrhage. And in fact, and more interesting, even as a second part of this study, they disconnected both hemispheres by uh, doing a, a corpus callosotomy. And then after they did uh, in callosotomized patient, when the both hemispheres were not connected, they still observed the, the recurrent uh, depolarizing waves and cortical spreading on both hemispheres. So the conclusion that they had to this bring this question that does the trigeminal parasympathetic pathways rather than the corpus callosum fiber are involved in this global cortical spreading depression. Similar uh, 
to what we see in a migraine headache. So now some clinical evidence of global brain injury in uh, ICH patients. A few years ago, we did uh, we defined a study, uh, beach study, brain edema and cerebral hemorrhage. This was a, a pre-planned, funded prospective study as a ancillary study to ATAC2 clinical trial. As you know, ATAC2 trial was a clinical trial to uh, study the impact of in intensive blood pressure reduction in patients with uh, uh, supratentorial uh, primary hypertensive ICH. Uh, the, the study had two arms. One was uh, blood pressure reduction to less than uh, 180, the other one blood pressure reduction to less than 140. So in this in beach study, what we did, we, we measured the total brain volume hematoma volume, perihematoma volume uh, in every CT scan by independent and uh, blinded investigators. And then we define global cerebral edema uh, as 5% or greater increase in total supratentorial brain volume between the baseline CT scan and 24 hour CT scan after excluding uh, hematoma and prehematoma uh, edema volume. We used a uh, semi-automated computer-assisted volumetric uh, software, analyzed software for this measurement. This method has been uh, already uh, validated by our group in a prior study from ATAC-1 trial. Uh, essentially here, you see that uh, we obtained a CAT scan, of this uh, particular uh, slice. You remove the bone with the volumetric analysis and segmentations and thresholding. And then you remove uh, uh, so-called uh, spaces. You remove the ventricular area uh, with segmentation. And then you also remove the volume of hematoma and pre-hematoma volume. And what you have uh, an E is just the uh, uh, brain tissue in that particular slice. And then we did this for all the uh, CT scan slices to get the total brain volume in the supratentorial area. So what we observed, uh, global uh, cerebral edema based on what we had defined was seen in 17% of the beach subgroup of ATAC2 subjects. Global cerebral edema was uh, more likely to occur in patients under intensive uh, blood pressure reduction and was associated with more severe stroke and higher NIH stroke scale. However, our study did not uh, find any significant change in 90-day clinical outcome uh, based on the presence or absence of global cerebral edema. Our study uh, 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 had some limitations. So we used a change in total brain volume between initial and follow-up CAT scan as a surrogate of the global brain edema. And the total uh, measurement was based on thresholding in the CT scan. So the accuracy uh, of the measurement uh, and the fact that the increase in blood volume could be partially attributed to the uh, undetected perihematoma edema uh, cannot be fully ruled out within the limitation of the CAT scan. So, so what, what we can do for further uh, evaluation of the global brain injury in ICH. So now I'm going to highlight the utility of advanced uh, brain imaging in ICH. So advanced MRI modalities in the diagnosis and prognosis of CNS uh, diseases has been expanding in the past decade. So prior studies have described pre-hematoma and uh, intrahematomal post-con enhancement in primary ICH and its importance as a marker of poor outcome. The pattern of hematoma enhancement in T1-weighted uh, imaging in acute ICH correlates with the high risk of hematoma expansion, basically the same concept of um, spot sign and blood-brain barrier disruption within the hematoma mass. However, there are other uh, uh, MRI biomarkers which can be utilized in ICH patients. Uh, for example, 
hyper intense acute injury marker or hyper intense reperfusion marker is a very well known uh, biomarker, very well studied in ischemic stroke. It's a radiographic finding of hyper intense signal within the CSF space uh, visualized on post con flare sequences. It has been hypothesized that harm or hyper intense acute injury marker represent contrast leakage into the CSF space due to blood CSF barrier uh, disruption or blood brain barrier disruption. So this is a study from uh, looking at the harm in ischemic stroke. Uh, this, these are all post contrast flare signal in a patient with large vessel occlusion. Uh, for example, here on the left upper, you see, you see harm here hyper intense signal in the Solcar area. In this patient, you see more uh, diffuse harm by hemispheric. Uh, so different levels of harm seen in this patient in 24 hours of scan. And on the right lower uh, flare scan, you see there is no evidence of harm in this particular patient. In ischemic stroke, harm is being shown to be associated with higher risk of uh, hemorrhagic transformation after uh, reperfusion and recanalization. So what we know about harm in primary ICH then, there's a study done by Kidwell and co-authors. They reviewed the pre-contrast and post-contrast MRI in patients with acute ICH to characterize the presence of harm in primary ICH. From 46 patients with ICH, 80, 85% of the patients showed some degree of harm and 50% uh, showed moderate to uh, severe harm. So this is from the, 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 the study here in GRE, you, you see the uh, right uh, frontal ICH in the pre-con uh, flare uh, sequence here in the middle, uh, uh, you see the hematoma and with some perihematoma edema. And in the post-con uh, flare, you see this hyper intense signal, flare signal in the distant area, both uh, uh, in the ipsilateral and contralateral hemisphere uh, as an, an evidence of blood uh, CSF barrier disruption. So in all cases, that they studied in all 46 patients, the so-called so enhancement was distant from the location of the primary hematoma and moderate to severe harm uh, was uh, tended to have a higher baseline NIH stroke scale and larger hematoma volume. And the authors concluded that an early phase of uh, CNS barrier opening likely occur in the first few hours after ICH and followed by a frank blood brain barrier and blood CSF barrier permeability due to release of oxygen free radicals and matrix metalloproteinase and other inflammatory factors. So, uh, further in utility of advanced imaging in hypertensive ICH, we did a pilot study uh, looking into the to, to quantify whole brain blood barrier, blood uh, brain barrier permeability within the first 24 hours after ICH. <clears throat> we, we aim to determine if the whole blood brain barrier permeability measured within the first 24 hours after ICH would be reflective of the clinical severity of the hemorrhage. Uh, we identified patients with acute primary ICH who had a perfusion weighted MRI scans within the first 24 hours uh, from the NIH nat uh, natural history of stroke study. Uh, the, uh, the perfusion weighted imaging, uh, the perfusion weighted source images were processed to measure the gadolinium leakage into the brain parenchyma. And the whole brain permeability measure was calculated as the mean value of the voxel demonstrating increased permeability due to gadolinium accumulation 
in the prank mall space. The detail and application of this technique of using uh, per, uh, perfusion, MR perfusion source sequences uh, uh, to study the level of the blood brain barrier disruption has been previously published and validated uh, uh, in this study and has been uh, used in multiple uh, multi center studies, including this uh, study from STIR and VISTA database, which, which basically demonstrated pre treatment blood brain barrier damage and post treatment ICH are associated uh, after IVTPA. And, and similarly, in this study from Diffuse 2 uh, data, the authors demonstrated that the, uh, the extent of pretreatment blood brain barrier disruption is associated with uh, high risk of hemorrhagic transformation after uh, thrombectomy. So, in that study, this uh, uh, here, it shows this is the pretreatment DWI and permeability. Uh, and here in the middle, you see the post uh, treatment GRE ICH. And then on the right side, you see post treatment GRE with permeability uh, overlay. So they were able to create a permeability color code showing different degree of the gadolinium leakage into the brain tissue as a uh, as, a, as, the, as to quantify the level of blood-brain barrier disruption. And they demonstrated that the amount of blood-brain barrier disruption on pretreatment MRI associated with ICH development after thrombectomy. So back to our pilot study here. Here is uh, the example of one of our patients, patients with left uh, basal ganglia ICH here on the top. Uh, uh, in the GRE, you see that there's acute bleed here. Uh, top three here uh, are source images. And then the bottom, you see the source, uh, source images with uh, blood-brain barrier permeability uh, maps overlaid on it. So on the left side, you see that there is, uh, as we expect, there is significant level of blood-brain barrier disruption in the perihematoma area, which we all know that's the secondary to the uh, blood breakdown and inflammatory factors uh, in the area. But, but not only in that perihematomal area, here you see that there is significant level of blood uh, brain barrier permeability within the 20, 24 hours, even in the contralateral hemisphere and both side and both hemispheres. <clears throat> And uh, we, we had the opportunity to evaluate 20 patients uh, with the mean age of 63 and the median NIH stroke scale score of five. Uh, the mean hematoma size was uh, approximately 10 cc. The average initial systolic blood pressure was around 180s. And we observed that higher NIH stroke scale on admission was significantly associated with the severity of uh, blood-brain barrier disruption and higher permeability of gadolinium. We also observed the trend towards outcome with higher blood-brain barrier disruption with twice the likelihood of poor functional outcome at discharge for every 1% increase in the whole, uh, whole blood-brain barrier disruption status. So uh, we concluded uh, that blood-brain barrier disruption appears to occur immediately after acute ICH within 24 hours. And this is higher in ICH patients with poor clinical status within hours of presentation. And this finding suggests a rapid inflammatory response play a role in ICH-induced uh, brain injury. So if uh, I wanna conclude here, the results of experimental and clinical studies support the need to understand the brain early response to injury, both at the lesion site and in remote brain uh, regions that are functionally connected to the site of injury. Regulating the activation of this secondary brain injury during the acute phase of ICH 
may facilitate recovery during the more uh, chronic period. So MRI biomarkers of blood brain barrier and blood CSF barrier disruption in ICH likely represent a second type of CNS barrier disruption distinct from parenchymal post uh, con T1 weighted enhancement that we see within the hematoma. Similar to T1 enhancement of hematoma, this finding may serve as a clinically useful biomarker to test therapies aimed at stabilizing acute ICA, uh, ICH and CNS barrier disruption. And utilization of the advanced neuroimaging in ICH may help in defining more individualized management for this patient, whether it is minimal invasive clot uh, removal or uh, intensive blood pressure management to diminish the rate and extent of secondary brain injury. I think that's all I have today. Hey, Sharon. This is Jack. Hey, Joe. Hey, how are you? Um, quick question. Um, is there any like indication that the MRI is only three Tesla or any plan to do in the seven Tesla or any difference that you can consider in ICH specifically? Well, uh, this uh, for this specific purpose, uh, utilization of MR perfusion uh, uh, to quantify blood brain barrier disruption, uh, it can be done even in uh, 1.5 Tesla. But there is no question that 7 Tesla MRI has various, uh, various utilization and in research, including in ICH patients. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Majidi. Um, Any other questions? Speaking uh, on Kellner, Dr. Kellner's computer, he actually just went down to scrub in. Um, so I, I don't know <clears throat> um, if he had any other plans following this, uh, but we did want to say thank you for taking the time to present here today. It's my pleasure. Everybody have a good day. <laughs>